very scary message. My preaching this morning is not meant to scare anyone, although some of these things are going to be incredibly scary. But my message this morning is something that God's placed in my heart to share with you, the church, because I believe in preparation. I believe it was my wife or someone that mentioned Hezekiah not too long ago, talked about how that God sent someone to let him know, set your house in order. And I believe that God is going to use this message this morning to speak to us on that very very subject and thing. If you will, stand to your feet this morning. Brother Stephen's going to come this morning and read our text to us in two different portions of the Scripture, Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, and then we're going to earmark Luke chapter 21 and verse 25. That's Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, beginning, and Luke 21 and 25. One more time, Matthew 24 and 3, Luke 21 and 25. Come on, Brother Stephen. Thankful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. It's been a long couple of weeks for a lot of us. I've been 14 days straight, no days off, So, and we're still mandatory six days a week right now, 10 hours a day. So hurricane restoration. <laughs> So is everyone where they need to be in the Bible? Amen? All right, Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you may not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. Luke chapter 21, verse 25. I'll give everybody about five seconds to get there. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves warring, men's hearts felling them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. Lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth not. Amen. So thankful for the word of God, aren't you? Sister Myers, will you bless this service this morning, the word of God? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want you to consider and think about two words this morning. A few weeks ago, while I was getting ready for the day, I believe I was just about to get in the shower, maybe been in the shower, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke two words to me. I didn't really know exactly where the Lord was taking me, I didn't know the direction. And God only knows I didn't know what I was going to find. The two words that I want you to think about this morning are the title of my text, and that is these things. I want you to think about these two words, these things. This is what the Spirit of God spoke to me as I was getting ready for the day. I thought about preaching this some weeks back. But I felt a nudging of the Holy Ghost to wait. I didn't really know the reason why, but now I know. Because since that time, we've had a lot of other these things, many. And that's what I want to preach to you about this morning and talk to you about. It's needful and necessary for me to take my time this morning because 
There's way too much information for you and I to lose out on if I don't. So I want you to be praying for me this morning as I try to preach to you on these things. I know and realize that we would not be the only generation that has ever talked about the end times. I would not be the only pastor that's ever preached about it. Matter of fact, there are books that line Christian bookstore shelves about the last days. Many, many, many writers and preachers have preached sermons and wrote books on the subject of the last days. There have been many that have prophetically tried to draw lines within the Word of God as to why that it was in their generation and in their time. There have been many generations that have gone by in front of us that they were rest, they were assured within their self. They were, they were determined that it was in their generation that the Lord would come. As a matter of fact, some of you that are older, much older, you may remember throughout the generations the false reports that came out, I believe in 1988 or something, there was something like 88 reasons or something why the Lord would come back in 1988. But there have been many false reports the years about the coming of the Lord. This morning I look back on my experience of serving the Lord and I've talked about the coming of the Lord several times. And while I'm on the subject, I want to tell every one of you, if you've never listened to a message I've ever preached, you need to listen this morning. If you've never opened your ears, you need to open them this morning. But when I first got saved, there were a lot of preachers that were preaching about the end time, a lot of them preaching about how that Jesus could come any moment. As a matter of fact, I've shared with you, and I don't want to get into it because I've got so much preaching to do, but I remember before I even got saved, I've testified to some of you how the preachers preach the coming of the Lord so strong. As an unsaved man, I remember coming home to my house one afternoon. We live way out in the orange groves behind the backside of Disney. My wife didn't have the means of transportation, and I walked up to the house. The screen door was open. The front door was unlocked and open, and all of these things were very unlike my wife. I walked into the house. The TV was going. I looked through the house. My daughter Miranda and my wife were nowhere to be found. And all of a sudden, it gripped my heart. I thought the first thing that came to my mind, what if I just missed the rapture? You know, I remember those times, and I'm afraid that we have a generation today that don't really think about the relevance that the Lord could come. It was the fact that Jesus could come at any moment that kind of helped compel and usher me into a time where that I got down on my knees and prayed because I knew that if I went to bed at night and I wasn't ready, you know, we were little children. I remember my grandmother would pray this little prayer. Some of you have heard it. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. All this sort of thing, something like that. And you know, the reason is, is because for many generations, our forefathers have believed in exactly what the Word of God said. We are living in a time frame where the people have tried to explain away. They've tried to make excuse. But I want you to know the Bible says this. It says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be when the days of the coming of the Lord is at hand. They were marrying. They were given in marriage. They were doing all these different things until the day that the ark door shut. And I preached the message about the ark door shutting, and it wasn't Noah that shut the door. It was God that shut the door on the ark. And the day that, they, that he shut the door on the ark, there were people on the outside. There were people that mocked Noah, people that made fun of him. Those of you that believe in the coming of the Lord, those that trust the word of God for just what it said, and those of you that know they have an experience with God, Don't think it a strange thing when the world looks at you and they don't understand why you believe in this end time event that we call the rapture of the church or the revelations talks about the time of tribulation. Don't be surprised because even in Noah's day, they stood on the outside of the ark. And I remember I remember I hadn't even been preaching very long. One of my very first revivals and I preached about that ark door shutting. And I remember that as I preached that message on a Sunday morning, 
And I talked about how that the water began to fall. You see, up until that time, water had never fell from the sky. They had never experienced rain before. They had a mist that came up out of the ground, but never had rain that fell from the sky. But on that day, rain began to fall from the sky. Even as they stood on the outside of the ark and they mocked and made fun of Noah building this big ridiculous boat. What are you thinking? What's, what do you got? What's in your mind? We don't understand. You know, the world looks at us like that today. They make fun of, they poke fun of the church. And then when we have crazy people that try to come up with exact specific detailed times, it makes the church look even more foolish. But I want you to know they don't represent the whole of the body of Christ. Say amen to that. Because those of us that are in the Word of God know a lot of that stuff is just foolishness. Even if they've got good points about why things may line up, none of them know the exact time. Can you say amen? But they stood on the outside of that ark, and as the water began to rise, it began to come up to their ankles. I can guarantee you one thing. Things began to rise. The water rise to the ankles, to the calf, to the knees, all the way to the waist. I can guarantee you the moment the water started getting knee and waist deep that people started paying attention. And I want you to know right now, people, that there are folks across the world in the United States of America that are beginning to take notice of things that are taking place in our country and around the world today. How the things are beginning to wind up. And some of them that were raised in church that remember hearing the preachers preach about it years ago they're beginning to understand look this is too weird this is too coincidental this looks too real this looks too much like the pastor when I was a little boy that Sunday school teacher taught me in Sunday school class this looks too familiar this is too familiar ground and I know something's not right Do you know, I believe in my heart that just like it is, those of you that have lived in Florida most all of your life, you can go outside and there are days that you know you can feel it when it's about to rain. If you agree with that, say amen. You just feel it. You can get a sense in the atmosphere. You feel the mist or the the dampness maybe in the air. I don't really know, but you just understand. And you look at the clouds and you know the clouds may be forming. But in the state of Florida, it may not have very many clouds and you can feel it. It's about to rain. I want you to know, folks, that we are living in a generation in a time that those of us that are spiritually connected to that umbilical cord that goes right to the throne room of God that we understand and know that we are living in very serious times there's no joke about this this is not to impress anybody but we are living in a reality in a world today whenever things that the Bible spoke of are beginning to fulfill right before our eyes more than any generation that we've ever known can somebody say amen amen You see, when we look at the Word of God, we understand that in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, very powerful, but also a very common book that is used when we deal and talk with the end times. In the book of Matthew, the disciples come to Jesus and ask Him privately about three different things. They ask Him about uh, the, the sign of His coming, the end of the world, and when these things would be. They're asking Him specific things because they want to know when is it going to happen? How's this thing going to go down? What are going to be the signs of the end and the end of the world? And so Jesus responds back to them and he says, take heed that no man deceive you. Let me tell you if there's ever been a time that you need to make sure that you gauge with that spiritual thermometer everything that falls from the lips of a preacher, you better do it now. I've never been one to lift up and highly esteem TV preachers and many of those that prop up, they've got millions of dollars in the bank and they, they fly around the world and fancy jets and all of this kind of stuff and much of their ministry is nothing more than uh, filthy lucre. has very little to do with ministry, real ministry. I'm not saying they're all that way but a lot of it is nothing more than self-centered filthy lucre. But I can tell you that many of the preachers of our day have tried to come up with the newest, latest craze about why the rapture will take place, why the rapture won't take place, why the, there is no such thing as tribulation or why that we may go through it or why we may not go through it. But I want you to know something. What you need more than anything is a spiritual preparation that goes beyond everything that is written in the Word of God. I had someone that came to me not too long ago and they said, Brother Myers, I don't understand a lot of the book of Revelation. I'm going to do an in-depth study. And I said, let me tell you before you study the book of Revelation, there are theologians and Bible scholars who have been studying the book of Revelation since centuries gone by. 
Many of them still cannot completely agree on every fine detail of the book of Revelation because there's incredible symbolism. There are many things that are symbolic in the word of God. Many of them that I don't believe we'll fully completely understand and know until the very day arrives and we see it for ourselves. But I want you to know what I tell everybody. If I cannot fully preach and cannot fully explain every fine detail of the word of God when it comes to the book of Revelation, there is one thing that stands true in all of this. Make sure you are ready because if I go before the tribulation, I'm going to be all right. If I go during the middle of tribulation, I'll still be all right. If I keep my head above water, I'll be all right if I go through the entire thing. Come on, somebody. If there were, never was a tribulation and I got my heart right, I will still be all right. Say amen. Because at the end of the day, even if I cannot explain or understand Brother Eric with the highest technology or even the highest level of learning and education, I want you to understand at the end of the day, just good old common folk know that if you're ready, that's all that matters. Say amen. You better make sure, church, that you set your house in order. You better make sure that you got the sin swept out of your closet. You better make sure that you're getting down in the prayer closet and consulting with God because we are living in serious times. Can somebody say amen? Somebody say, God help us this morning. But he says in the word of God, he said, take heed to no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I'm Christ shall deceive many. If you've seen that, raise your hand. I've seen so many preachers and false teachers that have deceived people. But in the name of Jesus, if I stay in the word of God, I believe that I can, I will not be deceived by the grace of God. Say amen. But he said that there will be many that will deceive those that are on the world or the earth today. He said, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. And I believe it is, uh, I believe it's Luke's gospel that told it this way. And it said that there would be a contentions. There would be certain types of contentions in the world. We are living in a tide, time of the world when there's a lot of tension among nations. Uh, and there's a lot of things going on in our world today. If you've seen it, say amen. But he goes on to say, you're going to hear the wars and the rumors of wars. He said, all of these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. I want you to understand. Those of you, I want you to know as a, this 100%, I want to clarify this. I am one of those preachers. I am not a sky is falling kind of preacher. You will not hear Brother Myers preach very many messages like this. And the reason is, is because I understand the very seriousness of this. It's like if you tell somebody, I love you a million times in a day it kind of loses its significance uh, and I'm not going to get up and harp on something that I don't feel in my spirit but I can tell you that in the last few weeks God himself has begun to breathe into my soul that we as a church better make ready can somebody say amen he says the end is not yet but all of these things have got to come to pass Nation's going to rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. These are the beginnings of sorrows. I want to tell you something this morning. I want you to listen to me very closely. This is the beginning of sorrows. This is the beginning of sorrows. He said the end is not near, but this is the beginning of sorrows. Famines. I got a lot of things to preach out here this morning. But here a few years ago, maybe a year ago, I want to say, I was studying on famine. And it was even this year, if I'm not mistaken, that they, credit, they gave credit to the source and came out and said that there are three countries that are on the verge of famine. Ethiopia, if I'm not mistaken, is one of them. People that are walking two hours just to get a little bit of water. Somebody say, God help this morning. Earthquakes in diverse places and all of this. And then I want you to look at Luke 21 and 25 here. He said, there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars upon earth, distress of nation with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. He said, men's hearts are going to be failing them for fear. Looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. I don't know about you, but when I read this, I understand. The seas, 
the moon, the stars, powers of heaven be shaken. And the Lord says, you're going to see the Son of God coming in the clouds of glory. Does anybody else feel what I'm feeling this morning? I don't feel good physically, but I feel the Spirit of God spiritually. He said, the Son of Man will be coming in the clouds of glory with great power. And he said, these things, when you see these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. It's close. I said, it's close. Touch me, Jesus. You see, truly no man knows the day or the hour. Matthew 24 and 36 said, But of the day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But I want you to consider what he said in Matthew 24 and 32, a few verses previous. He said, Now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, and you know summer is nigh. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, say that with me, these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Pastor Myers, what things have we seen? We've seen wars. Even in the United States of America right now, we are looking at the potential of a war. While there's wars in places all over the world, I know that what is close and near to us here, we're on the verge of war. In the last few days, I believe it was yesterday or day before, you, the North Korean prime minister stood up before the United Nations and he declared to the United Nations, primarily speaking to the United States of America, that because of the recent statements made by Trump, he said those statements were irreversible. And he said that the rockets would be visiting our mainland, that it was inevitable. That means it is going to happen. And I don't care if you like Trump or you don't like Trump, but I'm going to tell you something about Trump. I said this before I even voted. He can be a hothead, and so can this little short fellow over in North Korea. Say amen, somebody. I want to tell you folks something. We are on the brink of some reality. I feel the Holy Ghost here this morning. The nuclear tests that have been conducted by North Korea recently have registered earthquakes of 4.3 magnitude and up, and the last one was a 6.3, all because of a nuclear thing that they set off. And they're saying they're still seeing some of the ramifications, and they think that it's earthquakes, but some are saying it's not other earthquakes in that area. It's a result of what they did a few whatever days or weeks ago with the 6.3. On September the 11th, North Korean officials hinted that they will detonate their strongest weapon over the Pacific Ocean. Then it goes on to tell us that one of the weapons that North Korea has, I mentioned this in a Facebook post a little while back, is called an electromagnetic pulse or an EMP. The the EMP is something that our United States military is very concerned about and for good reason. An EMP has the capability to severely damage our electric, uh, communicate, telecommunications and everything else and completely wipe it out for thousands of miles. That means you can't call anybody, you can't talk to anybody, you can't use a computer, you can't use a smartphone, you can't do anything, your electric grid goes out, you got people mad because Duke Energy ain't got their, their electric on, let me tell you, a, a generator might be your only hope in this situation but if it happens it could be an absolute disastrous event can somebody say God help us 
But that electric and magnetic pulse, it will severely damage our electric and telecommunications infrastructure. It can cover an entire continent. And EMP has the capability of covering an entire continent. Clipping, it's going to cripple the small circuits inside of modern electronics on a massive scale. And on a power grid, phone and internet and other infrastructure, anything that uses metal is also prone to the effects that resemble that of a destructive G geomagnetic storm folks I'm not playing I'm very serious this morning this is no joke and I don't believe God would put this on my heart if it was not serious I didn't jump on the Y2K thing this is the first time that you have ever heard or you will ever hear me preach anything like this. And it's only because of what the Spirit of God has revealed to me. And I have only begun to tell you the intensity of a nuclear detonation in an EMP is about 30,000 to 50,000 volts per meter. Serious stuff. And all of this is going on while Russia... And China has looked to the United States and said, tone down your war rhetoric. I want to tell you folks something. If you think for one minute that if the United States gets engaged in a serious battle of warfare, that all the others that hate us and the Arab nations and other places won't take advantage of it, you got another thing coming. Because North Korea is not the only one with nuclear weapons. And I'm going to tell you something. Whenever I began to think about all this, I began to quiver in my spirit because I began to think about how the Bible talks about in the last days. I believe it said a third of the earth will be burned up. Let me tell you something. I'm not joking. God ain't joking. And if those North Korean people are just as serious as I believe they are, I believe that we could be right on the verge of seeing a great deal of the world destroyed in just a matter of a few days. And you remember in the scripture that the Lord said if he didn't come when he did that we would destroy the earth. Never has the world had the capability of doing what it has today. We couldn't have done it with arrows and and bullets and we couldn't have done it with slingshots or rocks or stones but we can do it with atomic bombs, hydrogen bombs, electromagnetic pulses and all of these other different missiles and rockets and everything else. Somebody say God help us to be ready. I want to show you a few things. And this is why that this has had me struck to the core. I began to do some study, and I didn't even realize a lot of this stuff. And now I know why he said these things. In 2017 alone, there have been 89 significant. I don't want you to think about the word significant. I'm not talking about earthquakes in general. I'm talking about significant. That means they have to register a certain scale before they're ever even considered to be massive or mega, if you will, earthquakes. There have been 89 earthquakes to date to 9-24-2017 today alone. The latest, more recent significant earthquakes in the month of September. Twelve significant earthquakes in the last 24 days. September the 2nd in Soda Springs, Idaho of 5.3. September the 3rd, Xinjiang, North Korea, 6.3. September the 8th, Medford, Oklahoma, 4.3. September the 8th, Pijiban, uh, Mexico, if I pronounce it right, at 8.1. September the 9th, Foothills, California, 3.3. September the 9th, Westwood, California, 3.6. September the 9th, Albion, Illinois, 3.8. 3.8. September the 19th, Ayaluda, Mexico, 7.1. September the 20th, Kamisha, Japan, 6.1. September the 20th, Ixental, Venu, uh, 6.4. September the 23rd, if I pronounce it right, Sigzobing, North Korea, 3.3. September the 23rd, Matias Romero, Mexico, 6.1. 12 massive earthquakes in just, tw- in just 24 days. 12. That's half 
of this month, we've had massive earthquakes across the globe. I don't know if you're paying attention, but we've also had signs in the heavens. And I know this morning that the solar eclipse we most all know about. But the Bible said there'll be signs in the sun and in the moon. And a solar eclipse would fall beyond that category or into that category. But what about the stars? You know the Bible talks about there'll be signs in the stars. Well, some of you may not know this, and I didn't even know this till I studied it. But there's been a significant debate regarding the subject. And astronomers are contemplating all of this but yesterday there was a significant event that took place and it only takes place every 7,000 years and it happened on September the 23rd and it comes right out of the book of Revelation chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 it's the formation of a star pattern that is in line with the passage we see in Revelation that many have carefully considered its relevance and what does it say brother Myers I know you want to know he said and there appeared great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with sun and the moon under her feet and upon her her crown twelve stars and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to deliver it's a serious thing folks we're not joking God ain't joking and the word of God's not joking somebody say God help this morning signs in the earth some of you may not understand that we are living in a serious time but there's been natural disasters in 2017 all alone of record proportions this is a year like none other other. Just the storms and severe floods in Texas, China, Peru, Sri Lanka, Syria, Leon, avalanches in Afghanistan, landslides in the Congo and the Colombias, uh, flooding and landslides in South Asia, Asia affecting over 41 million people and here in the U.S. We've had wildfires in Montana, Oregon, Washington State, California and North American winter storm in January of 2017. Massive tornadoes that hit New Orleans in February 2017. Canton, Texas on April the 29th, 2017. The heat waves of 2017. The hottest July on record. The first week of August, much of the Pacific Northwest was covered in a haze causing difficulty breathing that took nearly two weeks to dissipate and go away and clear up. We broke heat records all over the U.S. in the month of August 2017. And then here we saw in the Atlantic Ocean We've got the largest hurricane ever on record, Irma, that was recorded in the Atlantic Ocean. And I hear the Lord say, these things. You have no idea the burdens this pastor has been under. If it generations ever had signs Wonders, we are saturated in them in 2017. He said it's the beginning of sorrows. I want to read you this text one more time. Luke 21 and 25. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. We've had storm surges, surges of hurricanes, coming landfall of record proportions. Not too many years ago, I think it was 2012, tsunamis of record proportions. Somebody say, God help us. Men's hearts failing them for fear for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Even in heaven, things are going to get shook up. I'm glad I serve a God that even if heaven gets shook up, he ain't going nowhere. They shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things, and when these things begin to come to pass, 
What are we supposed to do? Run to a bunker and hide? Run to the hospital with a panic attack? Some of you are thinking, Brother Myers, you already about gave me a panic attack already. I'm about to give myself a panic attack. He said, when you see these things begin to come to pass. Let me tell you something. Come here, Brother Eric, for a minute. Get you a little scooter and come here, here a minute. I hate to get you up, but I just feel like this. Come on over here for a minute. Brother Eric told me, not long before Brother Eric started, I guess lean on me, Brother Eric started coming to church here. He got up one night and testified with tears flowing down his face, and the more the power of God touched him. The Lord gave us a message here one night on reconciliation. You remember that? Yes, sir. He told me his own words. He said, it changed my life. He looked at it in a different way. He said, Pastor Myers, I remember when you were preaching. He said, and you would walk a few steps, and you kept running into that pew. He says, like, I, I go so far, but I can't get but so far. I'm going to tell you something. If there's anything standing between you and another person, Ought bitterness, ill spirit, I don't whatever you want to call it, hatred. Now's the time to get it right. If somebody hurt your feelings and you're mad at them, you might smile at them, shake your hand, but in the back of your mind, all you can think about is what they did to you. You better go to that person and you better make it right. You told a lie, you need to make it right. Because we're too near the end to miss what the world has mocked about and preachers have preached about. You can sit down, brother. All these years, it will. How do you know what Sister Wilma said is true, Brother Myers? He said these things must come to pass. And then in another place, he says, when you see these things begin to come to pass, and he says, there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. I don't know if you see this. 89 significant earthquakes, 3.3 up to, I think it's 8 or 9 point something earthquakes all over our world. Brother Myers, have we had earthquakes in the past? Of course. But this is something like many of us have never seen or heard of. And as I got down in the prayer room this morning, And I began to pray. I paused in between praying, and it ran through my mind of the many things that could have only happened in a day like today. Maybe 100 or 200 years ago, they didn't have the means to send a tweet or a post on a Facebook timeline. You couldn't pick up the phone and get the latest news of what just happened in Peru 20 minutes ago. We're living in a generation where the whole world is knowing what is happening. And he said, when you see these things come to pass, when you see it, you and I have seen it, we've heard it. It's a serious thing. And I believe that as a Christian, you have a responsibility right now to get off of our backside because whether this is or this is not the beginning of sorrows, if I win two, five, or 200, or one, that'll be one, two, five hundred, or whoever, however many, that we're not already in the kingdom anyway.
We used to say when we were younger, it's better to be safe than sorry. Brother Myers, do you know for a fact that this is all going to happen here shortly? No. I don't know when it's going to happen. I just know this season feels like rain. And when I think about Noah that I preached to you about in the beginning of this message, they mocked, they doubted, they didn't understand the blueprint, but Noah prepared and built an ark to the saving of his house anyway. It didn't matter what people said. It didn't matter what they thought. But on the day that he stood inside of that ark and the door shut and the water began to rise, I guarantee you one thing. There's going to be a lot of people that hated our guts but would give anything to have taken heed to what we believed and what we preached. I want everyone to stand to your feet this morning. I'd, I don't even know how, really, without the leading of the Holy Ghost this morning to conduct a service like this because I've never, in all of my 20 years of being saved, I have never been in a service and I have never felt exactly what I feel this morning. Sister Farmer, I don't know if you and Brother Farmer feel up to it this morning to maybe play a little something, but I want you to bow your heads with me. And I want you to just take for a moment and I want you to ask your own self a question. What if Brother Myers is right? What if we're gazing down the hallway of the last days? What if? As heads are bowed and eyes are closed, without any hesitation, I want you to get in this altar and I want you to get down and pray the most sincere and serious prayer you have possibly ever prayed before.